In this video, we're going to take a look at uh, some font formatting. Uh, this stuff is pretty basic. Uh, a lot of it is uh, pretty similar in lots of Windows applications because there's lots of applications where you need to format fonts. So we're going to be looking at everything that's in the font box right here on the Home tab. So let's uh, start off. We'll select something first here. And so I'll select the first paragraph. And we'll just start off with the font name. Uh, Windows comes with dozens of fonts and uh, probably too many fonts. And it does do a live preview, so if you have something selected, you can pause the mouse as you move over the text. And uh, you can see what it's going to look like without actually having to select it, so that live preview is kind of a nice thing. Uh, also, uh, if you know the name of the font that you want, I'm a do Verdana. You can start typing it when this box is highlighted in blue. I'm going to type V E, and there's only one font name that starts with V E, and that's Verdana, so that's all I have to type. And then I can just hit Tab or Enter up there, and it will turn it. I'm sorry, I did a Tab. Let's see. That does not look like the Verdana font to me. Let's. There we go. Uh, I had to hit Enter for that to take effect. Okay, so uh, lots of fonts over here, and uh, it does a live preview, which is kind of nice. Okay, then we've got the font size, and if we look on this, uh, you can see it goes by increments of 1 up until we get to 12. Then it goes by 2s for a while, and this also does a live preview for you. Once we get past 28, it starts doing some bigger jumps, okay? And so you can pick any size you want. If you want a size that's not on the list, just go up here when it's selected and highlighted in blue and then just type in another size so there is no 13 point choice there. I'm going to type 13 and hit enter and now I've got a 13 point font and I'm going to do a couple of undos here and we'll get back to our original text. Uh, the next two buttons are pretty straightforward. The big A with an arrow pointing up will increase your font size so I'm going to go from 12 and when I click on this once it goes to 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 36. Okay, so it goes by two swell and it jumps. And you may have noticed that it did the same jumping as these numbers here. So it's basically going through these numbers. And if you hit the other A here, it will go in the other direction and take you down one uh, entry on that drop down list. So I'm just going to keep bouncing on this a few times till we get back to 12, which is where we started. Okay. Um, this is a uh, change case option, and sentence case is pretty much what I have right now, well, except for Marley. Marley's, uh, looks like it's all caps. Let's try sentence case here, and uh, actually those are lowercase letters. They're just uh, formatted that way. Um, so that really didn't do much of anything for me, but uh, if the letters, let's go back here and try uh, lowercase in every single thing. You see these are lowercase because of the particular font that's chosen. If I click on that and um, let's go to our font dialog box here and let's go to um, you see under effects here we've got small caps and so it is doing lowercase letters as smaller capital letters. Okay and that's an option. Uh, let's go back and select the whole thing here again. And actually, let's go to this second paragraph so that we don't have to worry about uh, this thing kind of messing us up. So uh, let's go here and uh, let's do lowercase. Every single word now begins with a lowercase letter, including the first letter in every sentence, the letter I. Uh, now, the letter I is going to cause a problem here. So I'm going to uh, I want to go through the other options here first. Uh, if I do uppercase, Everything goes to uppercase letters. Uh, if you're doing a title or something, maybe that's uh, something you want. Uh, capitalizing each word is something you might also do in a title. And uh, let's go to toggle case. And this will take everything that's uppercase and make it lower, and everything that's lower and make it upper. And normally that is just for if you happen to leave the caps lock on. Uh, but actually, I think Word will fix that for you automatically, so you probably don't need to use that very often. Uh, let's go back here and let's go to um, sentence case. And we do have a problem here with the letter or the word I as a single letter and the word Marley here in the middle of a sentence. 
uh, because sentence case just capitalizes the first part of the sentence. So uh, if you've got a bunch of stuff that's all uppercase or lowercase and you want to change it, uh, this is a fast way to get it to look close to the way you want it, but you're still probably going to have to go in and make some individual edits. And I've made quite a few changes here. I'm going to keep on backing up here until I get back to the original, which I think is maybe one more click here. So yeah, now the I's are capitalized and the first letter is capitalized and everything else. Okay, uh, we've also got an option here to clear all formatting, and I'm going to do that. And when I do, it basically goes back to the normal style, uh, whatever that happens to be. And in this case, the normal style is uh, 12 point times New Roman, and there's no first line indent. Uh, the left margin is one inch, the right margin is one inch, and um, it looks like I'm guessing that our um, line spacing, it doesn't say here what the line spacing is. Let's cancel out of that, and let's go take a look at this one here. It's, it's single spacing. Okay, so that's the default. Okay, um, so erasing basically gives you the normal, and then you can go back after that and make any changes that you want to make. I'm going to undo that, so we're back to our original text then. Okay, now I'm going to check out the bottom row in the font group here, and most of these are pretty straightforward. Uh, bold is just a toggle. If you do once, everything turns bold. You do it again, everything uh, becomes unbold. Uh, italic is the same way. Click it once, everything's italic. Click it again, everything is normal. Uh, underline, click it once, you get an underline, click it a second time. So the, all three of these are toggled. But you notice the underline has a little drop down next to it. So let's click on the drop down. And we do have several choices, and it will do a live preview for us here. So we can try different types of underlines here if we want to. And you can also, if you want, you can pick a color for your underline. Okay, I'm going to undo that. And um, now let's go to strike through. Let's click on that. And, you know, the, the value of this one is probably if you are editing a document and you think there's some stuff that you want to get rid of but you're not sure, and so you want to keep it in, uh, that's one option to keep it in. Uh, and you can always uh, go back to normal text. And this is also a toggle. So if I click on it a second time, it goes back to normal text. Uh, the next two options are subscripts and superscripts. And this is not really um, a, a good example for that, but uh, this one is. Let's type in H2O and, whoops, O, and let's type in E equals MC squared, okay? Well, the two in H2O should be a subscript, so let's uh, select that and then go up here and choose subscript. And then the two over here should be a superscript, so let's go and click on the superscript button and it will make it into a superscript. Um, the next, let's drag the mouse over that first paragraph there, and uh, these are our text effects. And there's a lot of options here. Um, you know, most of these are things that you're not going to use in normal text. If, for example, if you're writing a paper or something or writing a letter. Um, but there are some options here, and I think we get a live preview of these. You can do shadows. There's a whole bunch of options for shadows. Just pause your mouse over each one and give it a try. Uh, we've got options for reflections, and you know, these most of these things here I think are going to be things that are useful if you're doing a poster or something along those lines, uh, not for ordinary text. Uh, we can also add a glow to the letters, and the further. Down we go here, the bigger the glow, we, and if you don't like the colors, you can pick your own. Um, and uh, ligatures are for some letters that follow one another. Sometimes they will slide those a little bit closer together. Um, and then there's some defaults up here if you just pause your mouse over each one of these. Um, these are also uh, called word art. If you do word art in Word, you'll see these options as well. But those are probably for doing a poster or something similar. Uh, we do have a highlighter, which can be in multiple colors. And it's just the same as if you had dragged a highlighter over the text. Um, some of the colors are kind of bright and some of them kind of dark. Uh, you probably would not use some of these darker colors with dark text. But if you had white text, uh, you know, you might want to. Okay. Uh, and then the last thing is the font color. and uh, I think it's a good idea most of the time just to pick something from the standard colors. Uh, the 
theme colors change depending on what theme you have. If you go back to the, I think it's the design tab, and we've got themes over here, and as you change the theme, we'll talk more about this in another video, but as you change the theme, uh, the theme colors change. So if I go back here, and uh, I've got one theme, and I pick a color from, say, one, two, three, four, column five is the blue here. In a different theme, that might be a totally different color. So that's why I think, you know, you might want to stick with the standard colors, uh, or at least make sure that when you do choose the colors that you're not going to change the theme anymore. Now, if you don't like the colors that you're limited to here, you can go to click on more colors, and you get this color hexagon here that is divided up into, like, blue and purple and red and yellow and green. And you can pick a color here. Uh, if that's not enough colors for you, you can go to custom here and uh, you can specify how much red and how much green and how much blue you want in your color. These can be any number from 0 to 255, uh, which means that there are over 16 million colors available to you. Uh, it's 256 times 256 times 256, and that's also known as true color. So those are uh, pretty much all the colors that are available on a computer. And you can go in here and you can customize as much as you want. Okay, let's close out of that. And the last thing before we finish this video is I want to do a few keyboard shortcuts. Uh, I like keyboard shortcuts. Um, if you pause the mouse over these, it will probably come up and tell you what the keyboard shortcut is. And these three are easy to remember. If I do Control B, I get bold. And if I hit it again, it goes back. If I do Control I, I get italic. If I do it again, it goes back. So this works as a toggle. If I do a Control U, and again, it goes back. Uh, so those are some keyboard shortcuts. Um, we also have, there's one other keyboard shortcut that I think is really handy, and that is for changing the font size. Instead of going up here and picking an option, uh, now it does do a live preview, so that makes it easy for you to see, but um, there's a keyboard shortcut. Holding the control key down and clicking on the right square bracket, I'm going to do that, and as I do, keep your eye on this number up here. So control right square bracket goes to 13 and then 14, 15, 16, 17 and every time I press the right square bracket while holding down the control key it increments by one and so that gives you finer control over what you're going to see than just picking a number off the list because these do not increment by one and once you get past 28 uh, you've got some pretty big jumps so uh, if it may be the case that you know when you see it if it's the right size or not and so if you use the control on the right square bracket you can just do one point at a time until it looks the way you want it to look and then you can stop and the way to go the other direction is to hold the control key down and hit the let's left square bracket and that's what I'm doing right now and I'll stop whoops I went one too far so I'm gonna do right square bracket this time and get it back to the 12 point text that we started with so um, that's the font um, group here on the home tab and um, most of those, you know, especially these keyboard shortcuts over here, um, also apply in a lot of other applications.